Hello Fly Tires. I'm going to be doing some epoxying, uh, top coating, uh, finishing using 30 minute cure epoxy from BSI. That's uh, an acronym for Bob Smith Industries. I've used, uh, I, I used to use Devcon and I've even used a Zepoxy from Zappagap. I hadn't seen much difference in the way they perform, so whatever you have, that's just use that, you know. Whatever epoxy you use, though, uh, you're going to need to turn your work to prevent the epoxy from sagging uh, as it dries and cures. Speaking of sagging, I've used three different type turners. Uh, the first thing I use is this, this foam block here. Uh, <clears throat> with these little tooth, these little toothpicks that are they're going to be the they'll be the legs. Um, what you do is you stick the fly after the epoxy, you stick it in here, and then you flip it over. Well, you stick it in here when you're done, and then after you know you continue doing them, and after about ten minutes, you flip the bat the block over on its legs. Uh, like that. Right, you see a bug there. And what that, that allows when it's when it's sitting like this, uh, your epoxy will maybe start to sag down that way. And then after you get a few more on here, about ten minutes goes by, uh, you flip it over, and it'll kind of start to sag back down that way and level out. Uh, but after you do this, ten minute, let it sit about ten minutes and then flip it over right there and it should be good but you might want to keep an eye on it and you might have to flip it over again and I'm just saying this because that's the bare basics you know anybody can do that uh, if you don't have a motorized turner um, and this is it's probably good for a few batches but once you start poking your hooks in it, it kind of wears out the edge and if you start, then you put the two picks on this side and use that side. Uh, after going through that for a few years, um, I started using this manual turner. And then I used this for years until recently. Uh, it's made out of balsa wood. Uh, with these little electrical clips on it and you have uh, balsa wood on the ends and that's that's basically your legs that would be the like the toothpicks on your foam block and you know do the same procedure you would flip it you know you'd epoxy your fly and then you know clip it in here and do a few of them ten minutes go by and then you'd flip it over like that and allow it to sag back down that way. Ten minutes, flip it back over. Um, however, that's the old cheap Kirk, lazy maybe. Uh, always knowing about the uh, mechanical turners, or just not wanting to have a fool with one. Uh, until recently, I finally caught up with the. 21st and maybe even the 20th century, the old 20th century, uh, and I made this motorized turner here. Um, and it's made out of a uh, barbecue rotisserie motor, and I have a dowel with these, uh, and I set up a little stand on this side to hold this end of the dowel. And I put these balsa discs on here, and then some O-rings that I slipped onto the dowel, so I can actually adjust the uh, the discs. They're on there pretty good, but if you had to adjust them, you could. Uh, so I drilled the hole out a little bit bigger than the dowel, and did that. And then I put the clips, as you can see, around the circumference of the the um, disc. <clears throat> and uh, while those other manual methods worked just fine uh, for years and years and years um, 
this is the way to go. I mean, I did. That's, I should have did it a long time ago. I usually flip it on before I get started to get it going, and it went in, in the right way. And I just let it turn. It goes slow enough where you can actually put the thing on as it's turning. So uh, now let's get started and uh, mix a batch of epoxy, and I'll show you how exactly to use it. <clears throat> now for mixing my epoxy, I use these three ounce. Uh, plastic bathroom cups and I'll float it in a larger cup of ice water I don't have ice in it yet um, this is happens to be a McDonald's uh, soft serve ice cream cup that works about right uh, you could use like a coffee cup coffee mug or something like that to float your uh, epoxy mixture into uh, but then if you get epoxy on the edges you might ruin your cup, whereas this, it's who cares, it don't matter. Um, now, to apply the epoxy, I use these uh, plastic craft brushes. You get 30 in a pack for about two bucks, and they're kind of I find the fire was a little long. Uh, and that's what I apply the epoxy with the brush. Now, for mixing the epoxy, I, uh, I actually use the handle from the previous mixture. Uh, and when I'm done my epoxy, uh, epoxy, I'll just leave this in a cup, just like this and I'll go ahead and I'll snip the old brush off and then that's that's my mixing stick for the next time I uh, do some epoxy and I go ahead and put some ice in my cup I learned this trick from a guy that makes, he does fiberglass boats and he extends the life of his, uh, his fiberglass resin by floating it in the uh, ice bath. Now when epoxying it's real critical to use equal amounts of resin and hardener. Uh, to help ensure that I take my uh, epoxy from the uh, bottles they come in, little plastic bottles, and uh, put them into this pump dispenser. It's an old soap dish, I mean a soap soap dispenser. It took a little while to get all the soap out, but I finally did it. And uh, I've been having this for, like this for over a year now. Um, this a lot, one pump, it's going to dispense uh, a certain amount and they, they're, they're equal so when you do one pump of each you have an equal mixture and one pump of each will give you it will allow you to do probably about a dozen of uh, bugs this size little medium sized bugs or you know a, a dozen spoon flies about this size uh, If you're going to do more than that, you're going to have to do two pumps. And when you do that second pump, what happens when you when you depress this 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 chamber in here empties. So it, in order to fill it, it takes a little while for it to fill up because the epoxy is so thick. You just kind of pull up pull up on it, and that kind of helps suck it and draw it up into that. Um, dispensing chamber and you just you know pull it up until you don't see any air bubbles remaining and give it a second squirt I've got more than a dozen bugs to do here I'm not going to do them all on film but nonetheless I have them to do and I'll continue after I turn the tape off but anyway there's a hardener 
Now we're going to put two shots of resin in. One. Pull it up. Let it fill up. You can tell, see it went down. So got to pull it up again. Let all that air go out. You might have to do it a couple times like that. Okay. Go ahead and mix it thoroughly. It's important to to mix it thoroughly. You'll see the yellow and the clear kind of mixing. You don't want to see any streaks or anything. It's okay if it it gets a little cloudy and bubbly. It'll that all settles out when once you start fooling with it and applying it to you your bugs. Once it's mixed thoroughly, go ahead and drop it into your ice bath. Now another way of extending the uh, cure time is to use some rubbing alcohol. Uh, either 70 and 90 percent works. You put, I think it's a ratio of one to three. One uh, one part alcohol to three parts epoxy and that works fine uh, for painted bugs but if you start putting that on uh, bugs that that were done uh, colored with marks a lot it could uh, make your markers bleed um, so I just go with the ice bath works works real well